The new beta of Photoshop that millions of people are going to receive very soon has a mind blowing feature that's incredibly useful and kind of scary. In the olden days, we used to shoot almost everything horizontally because that's sort of the natural fit for the camera in your hands, but also people viewed images on computer screens that are widescreen like this. But nowadays everything is on your smartphone and things like Instagram want four by five vertical. So what you can do now is go back and take your horizontal pictures and actually uncrop them to be vertical eight by 10 or whatever you can imagine. And this is freaky, but you could even uncrop a frame from a video to create a much bigger studio than you could possibly have. Let's try it with this picture of Chelsea that I took. I'm going to press C to crop. And instead of cropping it tighter, I'm going to crop it wider. You can see up here, it says four by five. That is the eight by 10 aspect ratio. I'll frame it how I want. And then I just click generate. And now Photoshop talks to some smart AI computers in the cloud and figures out what should be in the blank parts of the picture that I just expanded it to. Holy crap. And it gives you three options. So I can click this and view the other two options. Put her at a round table. I think I like that one even better. Even this is just a starting point. If you want to change something about the expanded area, what you can do is just grab your lasso tool here and draw a circle and then press generative fill. And I'll say a glass of bourbon on the rocks. And there we go. Three different options. Let's look at a different example. I tend to shoot my portraits a little tight and sometimes I wish I could do it differently. But let's say this particular client asked for this in an eight by 10 vertical for her LinkedIn picture or something. Once again, I just press C and then I will expand the area here and I'll press generate. Okay. The top of her head is a little crazy, but let's try the other options. Okay. That one looks pretty good. This image is acceptable. Adobe's AI still struggles a little bit with the hands, but you are using Photoshop after all. So you can go back and either regenerate it or just manually edit it to look a little bit more natural. You will see the additions are created as a separate layer down here in the layers panel. So you can turn it on or off, or even after you make other edits, you can go back and select which of the three variations that you want to use. If you want to learn all the fundamentals of Photoshop, this incredibly powerful tool, even in 2023, check out our video book on Photoshop. It includes 10 hours of video training, or it's a full book. It has practices and sample files. This is everything you need to learn Photoshop because you can't just learn it piecemeal on YouTube. This takes you through a structured training course from beginning to end. And I promise it's worth more than every penny you'll pay for it. And if it's not, I'll give you your money back. Buy it from us at Northrop.photo. That's our direct store. So you don't have to give any money to Amazon, but it does have good Amazon reviews. Let's look at a wildlife picture. I think every wildlife photographer has had this happen. The bird is flying towards you, but as they get closer and closer, it gets harder and harder to keep the bird in the frame because they're moving fast and using a super telephoto lens. But as they get closer, the shots get better. They get more 3D, they get more detail. My best shot of this run was the last shot where the bird's wings are cut off. Now with Photoshop, I can fix this. So I'm going to press C to go in and not crop, but uncrop. I'm going to switch to the original ratio here and just expand this up enough so that the bird would be centered. That's the way I should have composed it and then generate. Holy crap. That's crazy, right? And now I can just flip between the three different options and even panning around. I can see it looks really natural. Like the wingtip here is cast appropriately out of focus. All the colors are right. And you know what else? Look, I can see the lens is out over the eye a little bit. I can fix that real quick. I'm going to give up on the book. I'm just going to take that and do generative fill. Good enough. Now let's look at a selfie because sometimes I take selfies, but my arms are a little too short to really frame the picture properly. Here we are with friends and family in New York. Let's uncrop. Let's do this square. Whoa, it got a little post-apocalyptic on the edges there. I do not consider this one to be a wild success, but I do think it could be a decent starting point. Though it's not perfect, I could go back and fix the various problems. This was an extremely complex image with hands in it and at a super wide angle. And so it definitely struggled some, but let's try a simpler selfie. This one's a little crowded. Okay. I think option three here works pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty complex to render the bottom half of a dog that's being carried awkwardly, but the top half of the image looks pretty perfect. And honestly, 
it's a selfie, people probably aren't going to scrutinize it. If you want to play with this, you need Adobe Photoshop, which you can get at sdp.io slash Adobe deal. Photoshop is now a software that you pay monthly for, but I think it's pretty affordable and I paid for it for years. And it comes with Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. Now, once you get it, you will open up the Adobe Creative Cloud app and go down to the beta apps section here and you'll see Photoshop beta. You will have to try that out, install it because it is not in the current version of Photoshop unless you are watching this in the future, in which case it might be in your standard version. Click subscribe to see more tutorials in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this technology, good, evil, how will you use it? And of course, Head to northrop.photo and check out my best-selling Photoshop training, the only book that comes with lots of video training and sample files and stuff. And there's a coupon code on the site that'll save you a few bucks. Bye.